Have you ever been driving along, stopped at a set of traffic lights and glanced over to the car next to you to catch someone singing along at the top of their lungs to some 80s rock classic, <laughs> drumming away on the steering wheel and having the time of their lives? If you have, like me, it probably put a smile on your face because singing is joyful. It brings joy to those who do it, and it spreads that joy to those of us who witness it. And I think our world could do with a little bit more joy. We live in a world of ever-increasing rates of anxiety and depression, and singing has been proven to lift the mood, as well as to increase the lung capacity, to decrease your heart rate, it can boost your immune system. Singing decreases your levels of cortisol, that stress hormone, and it increases your endorphins, your oxytocin, your dopamine, all those happy hormones that make us feel so good. Singing could be a really powerful tool if it wasn't for the fact that singing seems to have become something that is reserved purely for people who are good at it. Possibly even only for people who are an expert at it. Well, let's just think about that for a minute. I can't sing. I'm not very good. Why should we let our ability level get in the way of something so joyful? Something so powerful we don't do it with many other areas of our life. We don't refuse to go into the gym purely because we can't lift the heaviest weight in there. Now, at this point, I kind of wanted to give you another example of something we all do in life purely for pleasure, purely for joy, regardless of whether we're any good at it. And as I can see, some of you may have reached the same conclusion I did. Sex. <laughs> None of us know how good we are at it, really, but we know it's fun, and so we just throw ourselves in there and enjoy the ride, so to speak. I wish we could have the same attitude towards singing. I wish we could care a little less about how good we are at it and just enjoy the act of doing it. Oh, but I can't sing. I best leave that to the experts. If singing really is something that should be reserved purely for the experts, how on earth does anyone ever become an expert? They say it takes 10,000 hours of practice at something to be deemed an expert at it. Well, if after the first, fifth, tenth hour of singing, you decide you're not good enough, how on earth are you ever going to rack up enough hours to ever reach that expert status? Now, of course, there are some people who do make it past novice level and go on to become professional singers. So perhaps we should be questioning what's so different about them? When I was 10 years old, I was a member of my primary school choir and I loved it. I loved the singing. And there came a time when our choir teacher started to give us the opportunity to stand up in the school assembly and sing a solo to the whole school. Now I watched as some of my friends did just that. And I saw them receive a rapturous round of applause at the end of their song. I even witnessed teachers stopping them in the corridors to tell them what a fantastic job they'd done and, and how proud they were of them, how brave they'd been. I wanted me some of that. Who wouldn't want that glory? So the next time the opportunity presented itself, my hand shot straight up. Please, miss. Please, miss, can I have a turn, miss? She picked me. I was so excited. I selected my song and I went home and practiced it in front of the mirror with my hairbrush. The end of the week could not come fast enough. And as Friday turned around and I stood up in front of the whole of my school, I opened my mouth to sing. And what came out was 
anything but good singing. I mean, quite frankly, it was a train wreck. <laughs> my nerves got the best of me and my, my voice began to shake uncontrollably and I started to go out of tune. And I didn't have the skills back then to know how to fix it. So I struggled my way through all three and a half minutes of this dreadful song with this sea of faces in front of me staring up with this questioning look, almost as if to say, who chose her? I got to the end and I received a polite round of applause because, well, after all, we are British. But from that moment until when I left that school, I wasn't given another opportunity to sing a solo at any point. You see, in that moment, my teachers and my peers had decided that singing wasn't really for me. I wasn't very good at it. Now, I could have reached the same conclusion at that moment and decided that I'd be better off focusing on things that I did better. But I didn't. You see, I'd already experienced how much joy I'd gotten from singing. And I wasn't about to let this one experience of embarrassment, shame, get in the way of something that gave me so much pleasure. And so I carried on. And I'm very glad I did, because fast forward today, and I get to sing every day as my job, and I couldn't be happier. Now, I'm not the only person who has a story like this to tell. There are many professional, accomplished singers that at some point in their life were not considered to be particularly good. Fred Astaire, very famously, in a screen test for a Hollywood musical, was being commented on by the director, who wrote down, can't sing, can't act, balding, can dance a little. Luckily, he didn't take that to heart, and he went on to become the big success that we know him to be. He actually took that piece of writing and he framed it and put it above his fireplace, almost as motivation to keep going and prove them wrong. Elvis Presley got a C- minus in music at school. He failed. His teacher specifically pointed out that he had no aptitude for singing. How very different the popular music scene could have been. A more modern example for you, Shakira wasn't allowed in her school choir because her choir teacher considered her vibrato, that wave in her voice, to be too strong. Again, she could have taken this as a sign that singing wasn't really for her and perhaps she should focus on something else, but she didn't. She went on to become a multi-platinum selling artist. And the thing that sold her was that very same vibrato that her choir teacher didn't like. So you see, it's not as simple as some people are born to sing and other people aren't. These people showed the resilience to be able to carry on doing what they loved, regardless of what people thought of them. They chased their joy. Oh, but I can't sing, I'm not good enough. We really have developed quite a talent mindset when it comes to singing. You're either really good at it, and you should do it, or you're not, and you shouldn't. It very much goes against the whole growth mindset that we're constantly being told we should be using in our everyday lives. The talent mindset is very much highlighted by the popularity of these TV talent shows that we all love to watch. When you watch X Factor, they show you the best of the best, the most accomplished, the most talented singers they can find. And they also show you people on the far opposite end of the scale. What they don't show you is the 99.9% .9 of us that land somewhere in between. They don't show you that because, well, quite frankly, that's too ordinary. It's too mundane, it's too everyday to show everybody what normal people sound like. It doesn't make good television. And that's the thing we have to remember, is that X Factor isn't real life. It's just a television program. 
And it shouldn't deter us from joining in with something purely because we're not fitting into their little box. You see, real life singing isn't standing up in front of Simon Cowell. Real life singing is singing in the car. Real life singing is singing in the shower. Real life singing is standing up amongst thousands of fellow supporters, cheering on your team or putting down the other team. You're not singing anymore! Real life singing is drunken karaoke. Real life singing is crowding round your child as they blow out the candles and you sing them happy birthday. Real life singing is joyful and we should be taking each and every opportunity that presents itself to do more of it. So, the next time you pull up to the traffic lights and you catch that person singing away to Bon Jovi, don't just smile. Wind down your window. Join in. Thank you.